The Raiden and Yoimiya banner is right around the corner as we approach the second half of version 4.3. In this video, let us go over both units to see whether you should pull for them or should you skip them entirely. So Raiden is a 5-star Electro Polam unit from Inazuma. Being the Electro Archon, she definitely lives up to her title as she is quite a strong unit herself. Her elemental skill summons an eye which does electro damage to enemies whenever the active character hits them. This eye triggers every 0.9 seconds and buffs the active character's burst damage based on their burst cost. Unleashing the Muso no Hitotachi, Raiden's elemental burst lets her wield a blade where her normal, charge, and plunging attacks are infused with electro after the big initial. Slash. The damage she does here is considered elemental burst damage and she does gain a super armor where she has infinite resistance to interruption and what this means is that she cannot be staggered by the enemy's hit. For every hit that she lands, she will restore a flat amount of energy to the entire team and this effect can trigger up to 5 times with a 1 second cooldown. Her burst also has a stack mechanic where every time the other party members use their burst, it will build up Raiden's chakra stacks. So the more chakra stacks she has, the more damage Raiden's burst will do whenever she uses it. The stacks cap at a maximum of 60. Her Ascension 1 grants her 2 chakra stacks whenever any party member gains elemental orbs or particles and this Ascension is on a 3 second cooldown. Her Ascension 4 gives her electro damage bonus and increased energy restoration from her burst, the flat one, for every 1% of ER above 100% that she has. For her constellations, C1 is a nice quality of life that helps her max out the chakra stacks more easily and at the best case scenario, this could actually be a 10% damage increase. C2 is her bread and butter constellation where her burst will literally ignore a portion of the enemy's defense, leading to a massive damage increase for her elemental burst. Constellation 3 is the best stopping point for any low spender as it adds 3 more levels to her burst and any constellations beyond here will not provide any sort of benefits to her burst damage. Constellation 4 gives an attack buff to everyone outside of Raiden whenever her burst ends. C5 increases 3 levels of skill, so nothing to see there. Constellation 6 decreases the other part party member's burst cooldown every time her burst hits an enemy. And to be honest, this doesn't really matter too much because it won't really change the way you play the team, so sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be not. It's, it com it's completely dependent. I don't have C6, so I don't know. Anyways, my thoughts on Raiden. So Raiden is actually a very good unit, but only if you're at a mid-game stage or like the mid-game part of your account and you have units with elemental bursts that have a high cost that can do a good amount of damage. Some examples of such units would include the likes of Xingqiu, Shangling, Unrosara, etc. By design alone, Raiden is made to be run with these energy-hungry units because she can battery them really well and they can use their bursts in order to give Raiden the chakra stacks in order to buff Raiden's own personal damage from her burst. In fact, one of her best teams is the Raiden National Team or as a friend and I like to call it, the Rational Team. This team consists of Raiden, Xingqiu, Bennett and Shengling. This team has one of the best synergies with Raiden due to the nature of how their burst works. Shengling has a very simple, straightforward burst, a spin fiery polearm of death that lasts for like 10 to 14 seconds depending on your constellations with an AT burst cost. And then we have Sing Chu with really good hydro application, uh, interrupt resist, some damage reduction from his burst with an AT burst cost too. While Bennett with the healing and the attack buff and his burst cost is actually not too cheap at 60. So if you do simple math, the total burst cost of these three characters would be 220 since Raiden's chakra stacks does not count her own burst. And what that means is that's just a lot of chakra stacks, so your Raiden burst should be able to do way more damage than, say, having no stacks. And plus, Raiden can trigger quite a good amount of overloaded in this team, and it does contribute to quite a decent amount of damage. So, back when Inazuma came out, right, this used to be one of my go to teams for the Spiral Abyss, and I've played it so much that I legitimately got sick of running it because it's such a simple, straightforward team, and yet it's so darn effective. I just don't understand how they just work so well together. I feel like before Hyper Bloom was the easy go to low investment team, even before Dendro came out, I think Rider National was probably the go to team. Since, you know, when you consider the units, most people would definitely have Shang Ling because she's free from the Spiral Abyss, and maybe Sing Chu because she does appear quite often. Maybe I'm not really sure about that. But I can't really say much about Bennett, even though you can technically buy him in the shop in certain months because I've watched a lot of different YouTube videos and I've seen different comments where there are people claiming to be AR55 plus and they still don't have a single copy of Bennett. So that's kind of unfortunate. Anyways, Rational. So Rational is actually so cracked because it's a very low cost team that can perform really well even at low investment. So Raiden's ability to battery the entire team to give them enough energy to burst often means you can afford to 
lose a bit of energy recharge or ER on their artifact substats and you can actually focus on getting more offensive stats like attack percent or crit rate, crit damage or even elemental mastery so that your supports can do way more damage and they don't have to worry about getting their burst back. Well, TLDR, Rational is a very good team. Her other teams would include the likes of Hyper Carry Raiden, However, that will require certain units like Kazuha, Bennett, and I would say most importantly, a Constellation 6 Zara because it increases Electro crit damage. And personally, I have a Constellation 2 Raiden running with the catch, and this is one of my strongest teams in my account aside from the Ayaka Freeze team and the Hu Tao Double Hydro team. And as I mentioned before, I'm pretty sure a C2 Raiden compared to C0 is between a 40 to like a 60% damage increase. So that actually is pretty insane to say the least. And of course, well, the forbidden yet workable team, Hyperbloom Ryan. What can I say? It's Hyperbloom. It's going to be good. I think why it really works well is because Raiden's skill lasts for 25 seconds, which is more than enough to proc a lot of Hyperbloom in a single rotation. Plus, her skill triggers every 0.9 seconds. When you compare it to Kuki, which is at 1.5 seconds, so Raiden's skill already triggers much faster, which means you'll be able to trigger more Hyperbloom. And another thing is that Raiden's uh, eye skill thing, it triggers on the enemies rather than Kuki that releases a pulse around your active character, which can be especially useful when you're going against flying enemies like the Aeon Blight Drake or the Winnet. And if you don't really want to run Rational, or you don't have C6 Sara to try Hyper Carry Raiden, you can definitely go with the default Dragon's Bane, Four Gilded Raiden Hyper Boom. It's just very easy, low cost, simple. I don't really like this team because I feel like you're not really using Raiden for as a character. She's just kind of more of a Hyper Boom bot, but you gotta make things work, you know, you gotta make ends meet. I would say the only real caveat of getting Raiden is a matter of whether you have the units necessary in order to build the teams that will work really well with her. Outside of building teams around Raiden, you can also use Raiden as a way to battery certain energy-hungry hyper-carry units such as Eula or Xiao in certain situations. I would say between the two, Eula is actually quite synergistic with Raiden because you can use Electro and Cryo to trigger Superconduct on enemies which will decrease the physical resistance which in turn buff Eula's overall damage since everything that she does is basically physical. Plus, Raiden's elemental skill does buff Eula's overall burst damage which is pretty good. And then once Eula's burst is done, you can use those uh, AT burst costs to buff her chakra stacks for Raiden. And then right, you can swap to Raiden really quickly, do like 5-6 hits, restore the uh, 10, like 20 energy if you have a good amount of ER for Eula, and then just rinse and repeat. And that is a viable team for Eula, and I think that's probably the better one, especially what it's able to do. You can definitely use Raiden with Xiao. However, I would consider that somewhat of a pseudo damage loss simply because you want to if you're running Xiao in a hyper carry team, like in a hyper carry situation, right? You're probably gonna run up Bennett or Faruzan or uh, a certain upcoming character that I will not speak of. And you don't really have a slot to use Raiden. So I think it's much better for you to maybe slot in Favonius on your Faruzan and make sure that your Xiao does have enough energy recharge to be able to trigger his burst every rotation. But if you want you to, if you want to do so, that's entirely up to you. Raiden is very much a viable in any sort of situation where you just want to use her as a unit to basically battery the elemental burst of another unit. So to sum things up, Raiden is a very strong unit for an Archon under the right hands and whether you want to go full, full on Musou no Hitotachi and go big damage or you want to just run her as a Hyper Boom bot, she is definitely a unit with a good amount of value if you have the right units alongside the right resources to make use of it. Anyways, let us move on to the local Japanese fireworks girl Yoimiya. Yoimiya is a 5-star pyro bow unit from Inazuma. Her auto attack is a 5-hit combo where her fully charged aim shot will generate these things called the Kindring Arrows or something. And if you unleash your charge shot, it will home in on nearby enemies. Her elemental skill infuses her normal attack with the pyro infusion for 10 seconds and it will do increased damage. With her elemental burst, Yoimiya leaps in the air, fires rockets at enemies in front of her and apply the Aura's Blaze effect. This effect will do pyro damage periodically to the target monk if they are hit by anyone except for Yoimiya herself, which is, I don't know why, but it is what it is. Her Ascension 1 grants her Pyro damage bonus every time her Pyro infused normal attack hits an enemy. This buff can stack up to 10 times and a single stack lasts for 3 seconds. So Yoimiya's Ascension 4 gives an attack buff to her teammates after she uses her burst and they can gain an even greater attack buff depending on how many stacks she has from her previous Ascension, the Ascension 1. Anyways, Yoimiya's Constellations. So C1 adds 4 seconds to burst duration and gives 
gives Yoimiya an attack buff if the enemy affected by the Aura's Blaze effect is defeated before the duration runs out. And while I think the duration buff is nice, the attack buff I think is way too conditional to trigger and it's not really useful when you're going against something like bosses. And very likely you're going to be running Yoimiya with Shiminawa anyway, so you're not really going to have enough energy to burst every rotation, so it's not really that worth it. Not to mention that her burst, while it can hit enemies in front of her in a certain AoE, the Aura's Blaze effect only stays on a single target and the duration doesn't refresh whenever you kill that enemy with the mark as it transfers to the nearby enemy. So that already makes the burst, that already decreases the incentive for you to really use a burst. And there are situations where you're very likely to miss with Yoimiya's burst when you're against mobile enemies like Kairagis, Nobushis, or even the Lawachos. So I personally wouldn't really recommend you using it most of the time. C2 gives Yoimiya pyro damage bonus whenever her pyro infused normal attack crits, which is actually pretty nice. I think it's about a 10% damage increase according to Kuching mains. C3 adds 3 levels to her skill, which is, I guess is better than nothing, but it's not that worth fit for a constellation, it's not that big of a damage increase. C4 decreases her skill cooldown whenever her burst triggers the Aura's Blaze effect, and this isn't really that much of an upgrade because you're very likely to swap to other characters to reset the rotation and use the abilities again to compensate for your Yoibian's downtime. So having a lower skill cooldown is not going to change the way you play in a team. C5 adds 3 levels to the burst which is meh, I guess. And then C6 grants a chance for Yoimiya's infused normal attack to do an extra instance of damage and this damage is considered normal attack damage. This is a nice attack damage, but according to Kaching mains, this may misalign her vaporizers for her normal attacks because the way Yoimiya works, right, is that she has the regular ICD, which is her ICD internal cooldown for elemental application every 2.5 seconds or every 3 hits. Yoimiya, I believe, has like a N5 hits combo and usually the hits that vape is the N3 and the N5 which has the biggest number so it should see the biggest vape as possible so C6 might actually ruin that but regardless you know according to Kuching mains again it still is a DPS increase though it is quite underwhelming for a consolation 6. Regardless I think Yoimiya is still quite a complete unit at C0 so don't ever feel the need to go for her constellations and if you're pulling on the banner I hope you don't actually get Yoimiya constellations because it's not going to change the way you really play her it's not really going to buff her by that much. So, my own thoughts. I've had Yoimiya for a while. I think it was during Nahida's banner back in 3.2 because I got lucky and I won 50-50 for both Nahida and Yoimiya. And I've used her in actually multiple Abyss runs back in the day. In fact, I think my Yoimiya has the highest crit value in my account or highest CV, sitting at 240. And if you look at the stats right now, I'm sure Percy will show it. 100 crit rate. So she don't miss, man. She just don't miss. I know some people would say like, oh, you could go for more crit damage. No. Every time she crits, I don't like it when she doesn't crit. I don't like it when I see small numbers whenever she vapes. So 100 crit rate all the way. So I like to compare Yoimiya to Hu Tao because they're both really good at doing really high single target damage and most of their damage actually comes from the vaporized reaction. I would say the biggest difference for Yoimiya is that she does need a bit of babysitting because she can actually get interrupted while doing her normal attack animation and she is quite fragile when compared to Hu Tao. The one thing I do like about her is how simple yet brain dead she is to play. Literally, you just turn on a skill, you mash the auto attack, enemy dies, rinse and repeat. Plus, being a range unit, right, she's actually quite useful in hitting flying enemies in the overworld. And you can also use her as a torch lighter because she's pyro and a bow, so you don't actually have to swap to amber every time you need to solve the puzzle, and I think that's one plus. Very minor one, but better than nothing. If we were to talk about meta, I think she's quite alright. While Hu Tao is definitely better than her because Hu Tao is able to front load quite a lot of damage, I feel like Yoimiya is still able to hold her own. And what I do like about her teams is that you can actually use Yunjin and Yunjin does have very good synergy with her. Well, maybe Yunjin was probably made for Yoimiya for buffing normal attack, but regardless, it, it's nice that it's a thing. And if your Yunjin has constellations, she can actually be an upgrade over Bennett in some situations and that allows you to actually slot in Bennett for say the other half of the abyss or just reserve it for another team. Also, so Yoimiya being a ranged unit means you can hit flying enemies and let's say in something like in the context of Spiral Abyss or certain flying enemies like say the Aeon Blight Drake which is a boss. You don't really have to bother aiming and shooting him down and by shooting the weak parts. You can basically use your Yelan, Singchu, Spam and just keep mashing auto attack until he's dead. So that actually does make life quite easy. She can also be better compared to melee characters, especially when you're going against super cringe anti-melee enemies like Coppelia and whichever guy in Hoyoverse that cooked this boss, he needs to get fired because I don't know why in the world does she push people three times. 
Anyways, unlike Hu Tao, Yoimiya also has access to the Overloaded team and I think it's quite a very fun little thing that you can do. While it's not the most optimal in terms of damage, it is quite a fun team to run. You usually would run like Fischl with Beidou and the fourth slot can be flexible whether you want to snap on Bennett to buff uh, Beidou and Yoimiya with the attack buff and healing or Kazuha for a bit of grouping and V Shred or you want to use Venti for just pure grouping. It is kind of nice to be able to stagger enemies endlessly at a very chill, relaxing distance. And I think Yoimiya and Yanfei I think has shares the same kind of similarity is that the problem with Overloader is that it staggers a lot of the light enemies. And if you have someone like Yoimiya, like a range unit like Yoimiya or Yanfei, you don't actually have to run to them. You can just shoot them from a distance and they'll still get staggered. You can still benefit from the Overloader damage and it's it's a pretty fun team. To close things off, Raiden is a very good unit who can battery energy hungry teammates with some damage potential of her own. While Yoimiya is a close contender to single target vape damage compared to Hu Tao with her own fair share of benefits. For the Raiden and Yoimiya mates, feel free to share how these characters have been treating you for your adventures and for those who are pulling or skipping these banners, let us know why you're doing so in the comments section down below. I know we did get the drip marketing announcement that we're going to be getting Cloud Retainer, a human persona being Xian Yun and Gaming in the next patch and so from what I've heard from the deep dark web, they do sound pretty cool so I, I assume some of you guys will probably skip this banner to go for that. And maybe some of you probably went for Navia because she's cool. Anyways, as usual, give this video a like if you found it to be helpful, subscribe for more Genshin content, and I will see you guys in the next video. This is Ethereal, signing off.